You know, even songs are all about me and what I'm going through and the things I need. Don't break my heart, uh, my, my achy, achy breaky, breaky heart. heart. Listen, if you've ever line danced to achy, breaky heart, we have help for you. Call the number on your screen. 1-800-GET-HELP. <laughs> Today we were talking about how to have a happy, fulfilling That was really life. a low point in culture. I think it really Line was. Line dancing to achy, breaky heart. I think we could all I look think back even on heaven that moment was and like, say, what were we thinking? Yeah, even heaven. That's almost like leather. Uh, what are those leather pants that came in the 80s for a brief moment? <laughs> that was a moment. The Lord had given them over to the depravity of the mind. <laughs> they danced to the achy, breaky. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll see you. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. And you are looking fabulous today. We're praying you have an epic good. day. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, type in your name in the comments and where you're from. We'd like to read that on Wednesdays. And hit that notification button so it kind of keeps you updated when we have a new episode that comes out. And we're really talking about the difference between the... You choose one of the two C's. You're either a consumer when everything is about you and what I get and when I walk into place and I wasn't served this way and I wasn't served that way and it's our culture of the day or we get back to being a contributor somebody it's not about my experience it's about other people's we're experience. producing and helping others yes That's Cons- a, good a consumer's uh, self-absorbed the every experience is about themselves I didn't get enough they didn't treat me well they didn't say hi to me and a contributor is all about what I can give to others, but a consumer is never enough. It's never enough. You got you got the meal, but it still it wasn't hot enough. It's never Good enough, enough, no matter what you get. The meal was perfect, but the, the kid service gets the was expensive your water shoes. Wasn't... The kids get the expensive phone, but it's still still not, not enough. Right, and it doesn't matter how much you give to them. A single mom is working 60, 70 hours. Kids got, you know, hundreds of dollars with their outfits and clothes and everything, yet, you know, miserable sitting in the room with the lights off with the, the grungy music playing, how much they hate their parent and so everything. So say you're life. a spoiled brat. You're a spoiled. But really what you are is you're a consumer, mm-hmm. and I have to retrain you to be a contributor. Right. Cause You're here to give and pay back. And that's a good home, Jason. We, we we were brought up in a home like that. We didn't have anything, really. But we were always taught the power of giving back, that we were contributors. And then in our home, right, my family, you contribute. You give It wasn't back. about what you got. It was about the time that you spent together. Right? That's really what it was about. And as a family, we contributed together. That's what we did. And it's it's a happier life. And we used to watch shows when you'd watch the spoiled, you know, rich kid got everything. Oh, yeah. And we used to, he was like, the, in a way, the villain of the show. Yeah. But now that has become the, the kids, hero. The kids of the day. Yeah, and now the kids heroize the kid that gets everything. They get everything. And not that we didn't grow up wanting other stuff, but I remember the people that had everything, they were miserable. Yeah. And we were happy. We were happy. You don't have to have stuff to be happy. That and that doesn't mean just, God doesn't want you to have stuff. You just don't have to have it. But you hit, you hit, you hit something. That's a very powerful statement. I don't want to just go over that. You don't have to have stuff to be happy. No. Uh-huh. Stuff is great. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with stuff. But if 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 you think that your happiness is going to be the more stuff you get, you will be sadly disappointed all throughout life. That's right. Well, I'll be happy when I get a new car, and I'll be happy when I get a bigger house, and I'll be happy. We were happy with not not much of a car and no house. Yeah. Right. So you can't it's not chasing stuff. Right. It's chasing relationships and being a giver and a contributor. This is where happiness lives. So Luke six thirty eight, Jesus is talking, training up his disciples. And he says this, give, give. Right. Jesus was a giver. Everything he did was giving. Give, give and it life. will be give. given to you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For what with the measure you same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Jesus was saying what? It's just better to give than to get. And I like putting it in my bosom. I don't <laughs> know why that's my favorite place that he could put it. I want it in my bosom. And so so many people say, Well, God doesn't want you to have stuff. God doesn't want you to be rich. Riches are gonna destroy you. Well, no. Be careful. God commands us to give, and when you give you end up with more than you had. So God is okay with giving you more than you have. But he wants you to have this principle. I want to raise a people that's generous. Right. He wants to have children that have, are contributors, not consumers. I like the um, the part there at the end at the measure that you use. 
So if you use your giving is a teaspoon. So you're giving with a teaspoon. There you go. Here's my little teaspoon. Hi. There. there you go. Right. And, I'll be and a little so, bit kind so what you. heaven does is go, okay, I'll give back to you with a teaspoon. But if you can give with a five gall gallon bucket from Home Depot, yeah. if that's your giving, you're right, shoveling it. This then coming back to me would be with the measure. So if you go through your day and you give a little here, a little grace here, a little there, right? But but it, it, you're just giving a little. You're, and then then you go, well, where's mine? Right, but if you can go into your day of being a big help, a big contributor, somebody who is is loud about my con contribution to my wife and what I do for her and what I lay down my life for, and and for your husband, and you're big with your words of encouragement, right. you send them out for the day with a kiss and like, yeah. oh honey, you got this, you're amazing, man, family, we are so lucky to have a dad. Come on, dad, go, 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 get it. We love you. We appreciate you. Send us a text and some thanks. Like you're 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 contributing. Yeah. Right to to he, like I'm I'm talking from the perspective from a man. When Holly sets me off on my day, <laughs> I I want to conquer the world. Yeah. Right. Like when she's like, "Hey, got it. You are amazing." A little hug. Go little get him, Go tiger. get her. That's we were talking about Spider Man earlier. Yeah. That's one of my favorite lines of any movie. The end of the movie, she goes, "Go get him, Tiger." The police siren goes off, and he looks out the window. And every man at that part, ladies don't even realize. Every man was like, "Oh my god!" Like we'll because, cry because we've seen superhero movies where the, where the woman is like really you know life is so hard you have to go save right yeah. what, what about me yeah what Superman. about my needs right so what she does is she became a consumer that my needs are more important than you saving the world yeah but when you see a woman that that goes go get them go get them go make a difference as a family like that excites a man it's true. And Jesus was saying here kind of in a roundabout way, if you don't have enough, if you feel like you're empty, if you feel like you you know, you, you dig deep in the well within you and you're like, I don't have anything left to give, Pastor. I don't have enough. Then that's when you give. Because if you don't have enough, it's because you haven't been giving. Giving and it'll be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. If you want to have more, then you've got to give more. And that's what you find that... There's always something you have to give. In you'll, your marriage, you'll just never, give more. You'll never find a place where you don't. Even the woman who's like, hey, I'm about to die, right? Elijah's like, uh, what do you got? She's like, well, I just got a little bit. He's like, oh, give it, right? And now your cup will not run out yeah. during this entire famine. You find that the you know, little boy with the fishes, Jesus is like, oh, give it. And now nobody runs out, wow. even though it wasn't enough. And so in our lack, there's always something to give. Give what you got, and you'll find what you give is what you'll get. And Jesus is teaching his children, us, to be givers. Be givers. So you teach your children the same principle. Teach your children to give back. Right. Yeah, to make demands on their life that helps them contribute to the family. Isn't it interesting that... Take off your headphones, put your phone down, and contribute. Like, we're all talking right now. We're going to play a game right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch a show together. We're clean the kitchen up together. Mm -hmm. We're going to... That's a good one. Do the dishes. We're going to do the dishes together. You know, they say, and this is interesting, that worldly psychologists, when you have depression, most of them agree the most important thing that that person can do is go out and contribute somewhere. They get them down to a soup kitchen, yeah, get true. them to help... Because as soon as I give, what happens? I'm no longer about me. I'm about other people. And joy will always follow that. That's a principle of yeah. God. That joy, peace, and fulfillment always comes through the giving to other people. But depression and anxiety and anger and frustration, right, and not being happy always comes through the avenue of what I don't have and what the world is not giving to me. Yeah, that's good. Well, partner with us if you receive something today. Help us uh, get this message out to more people. Be a contributor. Be a contributor. <laughs> yeah. $34 a month or $8 a week, dollar a day really allows us to get this message out. It it's a huge difference. Yes. Dollar a day touches thousands of people. And so we encourage you to, to you enjoy today. You got something out of it. Um, be a part of touching lives. Father, and I just pray in Jesus' name that you deliver us of a consumer mindset. That life is not about selfishness or me or what I'm going to get. But Lord, that you would remind me throughout my day to be kind, to be giving, to make life about others and generosity and giving. And as we give, Father God, we do expect that you are giving it back to us, pressed down, shaken together, running over, just as your word describes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Dad Joke Monday. <laughs> I told my wife she was drawing her eyebrows too high. She looks surprised. <laughs> Am I allowed to laugh? Because that's mm -hmm. funny. How do you throw a party in outer space? You plan it. 
What did the fish say when it hit the wall? Damn. <laughs> Can you do that? There's one M. There's, There's one. no N. Why wouldn't the baby shrimp share any of its stuff? It was just a little shellfish. That was a good one. <laughs> Watch this clip. I'm going to give you two words. And I want you to, to, one, look at your life and see where you've been. But most important to me is decide which one of these you want to be going forward. That's the biggest one. And once again, this came up in a TikTok reel, and I went, oh my gosh, I have to preach on this. And the word of what our culture is today is we have become a consumer culture. A consume. Everything is about me and what I can get, right? I walk into a restaurant. How was my experience? Let me give you one star because I was not met, right? When I walk in a store, when I walk around, it's a consumer. It's all about me, me, me. So consumer, or are you a contributor? Which one are you? Because a contributor is somebody who is about you and it's about others. Consumer is about how you made me feel when I left. A contributor is somebody who's like, how do you feel after I left? Did I leave you better than before? Come on, somebody out there. Which? Don't forget to be in church this weekend, wherever your church is. And don't forget to like, share, bologna sandwich that thing, and subscribe. How important is it for their family to be in church? And hit that notification button. How oh, important? 100%. Like, you, you always have to be in church. Who drives Make it, it a centerpiece like I, of your life. Someone what? preached on this message a couple weeks ago about really? making church to the centerpiece of your life. It was a great message. That's I want to know who, because I'd like to listen to it. Because it was, we grew up, it was the centerpiece of our life. It was me. <laughs> did you really? Yeah. When did you do that? Two weeks ago. The sanctuary increases. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, I yeah. love that. That was one of my favorites. It's so funny how quickly I forget stuff. I know. I do, too. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>